Welcome back. My name is Matt Reiners and I'm the co-founder of Eversound, a company dedicated to improving quality of life for older adults by giving them the gift of hearing. Today, I'm joined by my friend, Jessica Daly, the National Director of Resident Programs for Senior Lifestyle Corporation. Jessica started out as a certified therapeutic recreation specialist and has worked her way up to a director of resident programs, a director of sales and marketing, a divisional director of memory care and programming, and now being the national director of resident programs for the past almost four years, where they most recently won one of the Argentum's 2022 Best of the Best Award. I've gotten to know Jessica well over the last few years at various conferences and the occasional meetups, and she lives where my in-laws live. And I'm always looking for a reason to go and leave that house. But I digress. Jess's spirit is vivacious and fine. Whenever our paths cross, I'm walking away with a smile. Thanks for joining me today, Jess. Thanks for having me, Matt. So Jessica, congrats on winning one of Argentum's 2022 Best of the Best Award for your quote, inspired to be together, end quote, program. Can you tell us a little bit more about the program? Absolutely. So the program came out, um, we started actually developing the program in 2020. So we were in the height of the pandemic and we had had a new sales, sales specialist start with us. Um, and her name was Travis Smith. And Travis had asked a very simple question. And that question was, do we have diversity training for our sales teams? So we all kind of started asking one another, do we have this training? You know, what kind of training do we have within the company? And it really led us to a place of reflection. Um, this was also the time, you know, in our country where there was a lot of um, kind of reckoning, reckoning of, you know, social and racial inequity. And a lot of companies were really, you know, struggling with this and having these same sorts of conversations. So that question led us to really start evaluating different areas within our company. We did, in fact, create a training for our sales specialist, but uh, being part of that process and kind of looking into our programs, it led to more questions than answers, really. Um, and so from there, we um, I, I just reached out to our program team. So our company has about 150 communities across the country. And I reached out to our program directors and our memory care directors with this question of, did they want to start exploring this topic with me? And how could we bring more diverse programs to our residents and our communities? And anytime you reach out to the people you lead and ask them to sort of volunteer on a panel, you never know what you're going to get. You, you might get one or two eager people um, in this case, I had 50 or more than 50, and it really blew me away because I realized at that point that we had touched an important note and we really were onto something that people were passionate about and that people really wanted to contribute to. So at that point, we didn't know what we were doing yet. We were really just saying, hey, we, we found that we need to do something. Um, and so we started having um, some virtual meetings and discussing, you know, what would that what would that actionable item be? Um, because we could sit around and talk about it all day, but we really needed to figure out what could we do? What could we actively do? And so our sphere of influence is programs and events that we lead within the communities. And so we started looking at our calendars and asking questions like, you know, are we celebrating holidays that are outside of the, the Christian or Catholic faith? Are we making sure we have food preferences available that are not just for special diets, but for uh, maybe religious observances during certain periods of time? Um, are we gender tagging our programs like men's club and women's club and, you know, a ladies tea and, and things like that? Um, and so that just really led us down this path of, yeah, we there's definitely some areas of opportunity for us in programming. Um, from there what we decided to actually do was we already do monthly theme. Um, we have a monthly theme requirement for our program directors. So um, we thought, why don't we look at the year of 2021 and start thinking about each month and one overall topic that we could start planning for. So we outlined a calendar um, with different topics throughout the year. And then each month, we, once we had the topics identified, we had a planning call where, again, all of our program directors and all of our memory care directors were invited to come back and participate. 
That way we were getting different points of view um, on these topics. And so we just, so if the topic was World History Month, and that was, uh, or not World History, World Religion Month in January, then people from hopefully all different backgrounds on our team could contribute ideas. So we would kind of prime the pump with like, here's a couple things that we've found that might be great, um, you know, topics of conversation with your residents or virtual programs, but we wanna hear from you. So then we'd have these great calls where we shared lots of ideas and then we would send back out a sample calendar and a program guide. So they didn't have to go digging through Google they could actually get advice from their peers. So that led to a whole year long um, of learning and, and experiencing and programming. Um, and so <laughs> that is the longest short description, but that is essentially what we did um, for this program. I love it. And it's great to see, you know, organizations identifying that gap and like, you know, and, and just embracing it. I think hindsight's always 2020, 20, right? So you can kind of look back and see what you were doing or were not doing and then adjusting, mm -hmm. right? And that's what's the yeah. beautiful thing about that. And I know you're, you know, you had mentioned that person that came in asked about the the training. Um, and I'm curious, were you guys doing any DEI initiatives before you started this program? Or like, kind of what did that look like? I, I know I remember 2020 of all the you know, what was going on in the world at that point, but was there anything you guys were doing before that started? I would say not intentionally. So I, th I think there were little pockets of, of things we were doing. Some of our communities were absolutely celebrating people of diverse backgrounds and cultures. And we, you know, I think a pretty standard long-term care program is like a passport dining or like around the world type program. Um, but when we, you know, when we really, one of the questions we asked, so we did put a little survey together. Um, and one of the questions we asked was how often are you leading programs, uh, you know, featuring uh, people from a diverse background or culture? Is it once a week? Is it once a month? Is it, you know, less than once a month? And so I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but there was a true opportunity for us to, to do better and to do more. So, um, so that was kind of eye opening. And, you know, through all of this, it was a lot, it was, there was definitely a lot of um, this feeling of like, oh my goodness, I can't, I can't believe where we're at. And we really wanted to do better. So that, you know, there were some definitely um, some awakenings for us and our team. Yeah. Hey, and it's good to embrace those and, and learn mm -hmm. from it and grow from it. Right. I think that's yeah. the, the most important part. We can, you know, look back of, of how we've done everything, but to kind of embrace the mentality, well, like that's how we've always done it. And that's how the way we should keep doing it. It's just not true at all. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, and I'm curious, so how have you seen your residents, staff, or even families respond to the new program? For the most part, all so a lot of positive reactions. I think our staff, for our, for our team members, when I think specifically for our programmers, the, the memory care directors and the, um, the, the program directors, they had an opportunity to actually contribute to our national initiatives, where in the past we had done more of a, we, you know, from the home office, we'd put stuff together for them, where this kind of turned it around. And it was like, we would, like I said, we would kind of start each call off with a couple ideas so that we'd get the conversation going, but they were having a true opportunity to actually put in their ideas and then see them come back out in those planning guides. Um, and people were kind of, I think they were feeling really proud of some of the ideas that they contributed. contributed. Um, and then for residents, I, I think we saw things like, you know, potentially increased self-esteem where they're seeing themselves in programming. They're maybe feeling more pride for them, their own culture or traditions. Um, Self-expression was big. So we did a lot of programs with art and music and writing. Um, so, you know, having a chance to express feelings and thoughts around some of these different topics. Um, and just learning, you know, learning about one another. And hopefully that leads to more connection or compassion towards our uh, our peers in our community. Yeah, right. It's a community, right? There's just not mm -hmm. a cookie cutter for one single person for everybody. So it's great to see you guys are doing that. And yeah, I would definitely think that would, would add to some of those things you had talked about. Um, and now, as you think of programming, like how do you think some of these DEI diversity initiatives can really just play a role as we think about programming today and as we look at look about it into the future 
So I think one of the big things that I started sort of recognizing as we dug into this more and more is in senior housing, I think we we always talk about hospitality, right? So this feeling of welcoming people and, and being, you know, kind to one another and accepting. Um, but then thinking about how far does that hospitality go? Do we do we really allow for space to, for people to be themselves as they are in the moment? So, you know, open to celebrating themselves as their true self in our programs. And do we do we celebrate them? Do we celebrate them? Or do we say, you know what, you're 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 maybe the only person in our community that you know, has that belief or that tradition. So, you know, maybe we can find a way for you to do that with your family. Or do we pull it into the bigger group and say, hey, let's learn about this, you know, really neat tradition that you do. And let's have a whole community celebration about it. Or let's learn about that topic. Um, I think many, many, many of our communities have some of their first, you know, pride celebrations. And, you know, just let's let's learn what what were the Stonewall riots about, or maybe refresh our memory because our residents lived through that. Um, and just thinking about, you know, bringing in supportive resources for uh, residents. Um, and then for for residents that um, that may identify um, as transgender or gay or lesbian, they're now seeing their peers celebrate with them. So that's kind of cool. Absolutely. I love that. And it's, uh, it's great to think too, of just like bringing that education piece and just teaching people about these different cultures and stuff. I'm always... You know, I've been known to ask probably too many questions when I'm learning about those things, but it's good. I mean, curiosity is like what drives us, right? And curiosity yeah. with good intention too, I find is like what it's all about. Yes. Um, and I think when people start to, like you said, you ask those questions, you realize that your your neighbor or your your uh, person that you dine with is genuinely interested in you and, and learning about you. And that just creates more connection. Um you know, we we want our communities to be great places to work and live, and those kind of connections definitely um, lead to that that outcome. Yeah, absolutely. And it, Jess, looking into the future here, if you could just like give three guiding principles to other senior living providers who are thinking through their own DEI initiatives, what would you say? The first thing I would say is definitely listen and be open to learning. So there's a lot. For us to learn as leaders, especially if we are, do not identify with a minority group, um, so making sure that we are bringing in. So that's kind of so that's number one is list be open to listening and learning and maybe having your own biases unveiled or unveiled so that we can address those um, in the work that we do. Secondly. Um, bringing people in to that conversation that are from different backgrounds. So, you know, we can't just sit around with our current leadership and discuss what um, what we should do. We should be bringing, you know, voices from different backgrounds in to have that discussion. Um, and then, let's see. <laughs> I, I did write this down because, oh, pick an actionable item because again, we can have these discussions, but we need to pick something. And there's, there's when you start peeling back the layers, there's a lot of work to do in, in many organizations. So if we look at it and we say, oh my gosh, there's so much to do. We don't even know where to begin. It's really easy to get stuck there. Um, pick something, you know, is it a monthly training? Is it, a, um, you know, choosing a book that you'll read together as a team? Is it like we did picking, you know, programs and events and focusing on that. So if you, if you pick something and set that intention, then you can start to see progress. Well, Jess, thanks so much for joining me today. Congrats again on the award. And it's great to see, you know, an organization stepping up, finding some of the gaps in what they're doing and, and implementing, right. And just taking action. And I think that's just a great learning. So thanks so much for joining us today and, and uh, appreciate you and all that you bring into this industry. Thank you, Matt.